Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Yes. Welcome to the Good class. Evening, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much for joining today. And um, well, some of you have already been uh, with me, right? So welcome. Para los que ya estaban conmigo, pues bienvenidos. I'm very happy to see you again. And we're going to uh, continue with uh, Principiantes Modulo 3. So welcome and congratulations, right, for um, being able to move to the next level. And well, guys, pretty much today, uh, we're going to start working with, uh, with a new uh, section, right? That's going to be section number one. And vamos a trabajarlo de la misma forma que la vez anterior, right? You know that during the week number one, we're going to be working um, uh, two or three sections. And then we're going to move to the um, midterm, right, uh, exam, etc. But do not worry. No se preocupen porque igual yo les voy a mandar a ustedes la, el orden de cómo lo vamos trabajando, okay? So, again, thank you very much for joining and welcome. Bienvenidos, chicos, bienvenidos. Así de que... Well, let's start. Let me go ahead and um, share the screen with you. Just give me one moment. I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. So um, this is going to be your session number one, right, in um, module three of Principiantes. And today is March 1st, right now, mes, nuevo modulo, así que we're going to take advantage of it as much as we can, okay? And for the ones that do not know me, verdad, para los que no me conocen, soy teacher Marcela. And um, if you have any questions, you can reach me through WhatsApp, right? Ahí está el WhatsApp del grupo, así que pueden revisar en sus correos la información que les mandaron. Ahí van a encontrar el link para, eh, para enrolarse al grupo, verdad, de WhatsApp. Así que, eh, bueno, chicos, eh, section number one is kind of interesting. Está bien interesante, está bien bonita, because we're coming from, um, you know, working and reinforcing simple present, ¿verdad? La verdad es que tuvimos una oportunidad bastante bonita de practicar mucho el present simple, y, y eso pues es bastante bueno. Why, teacher? Well, because... Present simple is the basic um, tense, right? Es como algo bien básico que debemos manejarlo muy bien y eso pues luego nos va a acompañar a recolectar otro tipo de información que también tenemos que manejarla súper bien. Así de que cuando tengan una pregunta, you can stop me and I'll be more than glad to answer your questions, ¿ok? Eh, bueno, no sé si hay alguien que eh, sea nuevo y que no haya trabajado la plataforma aún o tenga alguna pregunta al respecto. Hi, hello, teacher. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the class, Karen. Miss you. Yeah, I miss you too, guys. Thank you very much for being here. Gracias por acompañarme a la clase, como siempre. Thank you. Pero igual, chicos, si no tienen ahorita preguntas sobre la plataforma, no se preocupen que mientras vayan surgiendo, usted pues me las trae acá a la clase y yo con mucho gusto les ayudo. Okay? Teacher, are you our teacher? Are you our teacher? Uh, uh, your teacher, yes. According to what I understand, yes. <laughs> De acuerdo a lo que entiendo, sí. <laughs> Ustedes son principiantes tres, ¿verdad? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, pues sí. <laughs> Yo me puso la duda. <laughs> Veamos. Excellent. I am very happy. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's learn together. Vamos a aprender juntos otra vez cosas nuevas, ¿ok? So, let's see. Eh, bueno, si no hay preguntas aún, tranquilo, ¿verdad? Si van surgiendo, pues me van diciendo. Y como ustedes saben, pues la sesión se mantiene generalmente en inglés. So, let me see. Um, Roberto, can you please help me reading the lesson objective? The lesson objective. The one in English, please. Ok. By the end of this class, you will learn the month and date. Additionally, you will learn about birthday. Thank you very much, okay? So this is like the introduction, guys. And after we have the introduction talking about a month and dates, right? We're going to move to a very interesting topic, which is, it's not a tense, no es en si un tense, 
but it's something very interesting that will help us to talk about the future and you will see okay so as you see, as you can see there good evening good evening Arnulfo welcome to the class thank you for joining and as you can see there we're going to talk a little bit about birth dates and we're going to review the months and the dates okay now, when it comes to the months and the dates, guys, it, it's very important to know that sometimes uh, we mispronounced, right, some of the months, right, in English, and sometimes we confused, right, the ordinal numbers with the cardinal numbers, right? And generally, when we are talking about dates, we're going to do it, uh, we're going to express them, right, with the numbers that you have on the screen, okay? So, in the in the platform, you're able to see on the very first section, okay, um, it's a video about months and about dates, right? And if you pay attention, right, you can um, practice a little bit of the pronunciation, right, of the months. And we're going to do it here also, right? Pero lo que les he puesto ahí en la pantalla es prácticamente la, lo esencial del video, ¿verdad? del primer video in section number one, okay? So whenever we want to talk about birth dates, we need to know how to pronounce the months. We need to know which, is, uh, which are the numbers that we're going to use, okay? Not only that, because you need to know the order, right? El orden en el que, en el que decimos las cosas, okay? That's something very important. Y no solo el orden, sino que también the preposition, the preposition that we're going to use, right? When we are talking about dates. Dates in Spanish is fechas, right? That's dates. So with the months, we're going to practice a little bit. Uh, I just want you to do it, you know, yourself, right? And if you can, please activate your microphones. I'll wait for your response. Yo les voy a esperar por sus respuestas, okay? So I'm going to say the months first, and then you're going to repeat after me, okay? So please repeat, January. 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 Mm -hmm. January. 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 February. 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 Okay. February. March. 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 April. 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 May. 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 Very good. May. June. 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 July. 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 August. 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 September. 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 October. 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 November. 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 December. 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 Okay, so December. be careful with the pronunciation of February, right? February. February. Uh -huh. February. And also with February. July. February. August. July. July. August. July. August. 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 Very good. August. So at the beginning is ah, uh, like August, right? August. 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 Mm -hmm. August. Very good. And now, guys, um, now think about. Think about your favorite month right now. Which is your favorite month? Let's go ahead and see. Please type in the chat your favorite month. Okay. December. Okay, so type it. In my case, my favorite month is probably December. Okay, so my favorite month is December. What about you guys? What about you? Okay, October says Jose David. Thank you. Okay, December, we got August. December is winning right now. Very good. Okay, what about the rest? Okay, so December, very good. Okay, 
Excellent. April, or really, probably because it's your birthday. So we got December is winning. December is the winner, you see? Excellent. Okay, very good. Now, a couple of you guys, a couple of you probably can share with the class the reason why. Why do you like December? Why do you like it? Why do you like it so much? You see, most of you are saying that December is your favorite month. Then we got a little bit with a little bit of um, August oh, because it's the best for money, says Karen, okay? Because I have vacation, says Marilyn, okay? Very good. I like October because it's the month of my birthday, okay? That's what Jose Ariola says. Oh, actually, guys, it's true. Well, in my case, I like December because I can spend time with my daughter fully, right? It's like no interruptions. I can spend time with her, okay? So very good. Excellent, guys. Now, Thank you very much. I really like December says for my birthday. Okay, very good. Now, guys, there's something I really need you to know, okay? And that is very, very important. Whenever we're talking about months, okay, you need to be very careful because actually they start with capital letter, okay? So capital letter, capital letter, oops, I'm sorry, capital letter, like this is las mayúsculas, okay? So if you see... Pay attention to the um, pay attention to the board. I mean to the screen. I'm sorry. If you see, take a look at here. It says all of the months of the all of the months of the year. I'm sorry. They begin with a capital letter, right? So capital letter is star. Uh, I mean each month of the year starts with a capital letter. I'm sorry. Okay, we got January, we got February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. All of them, you see, they begin with capital letter. Todos comienzan con mayúscula. Okay, Rosita says because it's my birthday. Okay, very good. So, actually, um, don't forget that, guys. No olvidemos eso. Siempre que escribimos un mes, lo hacemos con mayúscula. Es todo lo contrario español, right? In Spanish, we do not need to add capital letters, okay? Generalmente no agregamos mayúsculas, ¿verdad? A los, a los meses, ni a los días, en inglés sí. We do it with capital letter, okay? Days of the week also, days of the week, days of the week, okay? Days of the week are, I mean, uh, yeah, are written with a capital letter, with a capital letter okay también los días de la semana son con mayúscula okay very good so any question guys so far alguna pregunta chicos no questions no teacher. questions very good thank you very much teacher teacher dígame, dígame. good evening good evening uh, dígame. if i write the month in for example in one letter uh, independent in this position that i, I write the month Always start with capital letter. Yes, month. that is correct. Okay. It doesn't matter the position, if it is at the beginning, if it is in the middle, if it is at the end, it starts with capital letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, thanks. I have a question. Okay, you have a question, tell me. Que si el, la fecha de día del año se puede tomar como una fecha especial. I'm sorry, repeat the question. Sí, la fecha del día del niño se puede tomar como una fecha especial. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, in the United States casi todos los días hay un día especial. Todos los días hay algo que celebrar en Estados Unidos. Okay. Yeah, of you can you can consider as a special date, uh -huh. Why not? Of course, if it is important to you, so you can consider that as a special date. Now, guys, uh, let me go Yes. I have a question. Yeah. Is that correct? Um, my birthday is in. Tiene que ser on. It depends. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good question. Ya voy a llegar ahí. Acá, chicos, estamos hablando de fechas, right? And there are two ways. Um, no, I don't want to say two ways, but there are two things that generally we express when we're talking about birthdays, okay? And I will share with you right now. Ya que me hicieron una pregunta, voy a pasarme a eso acá. Okay, give me one second. And we're going to... 
poéticas. Right now, we're talking about dates. Ok, we're talking about dates. So, date. Ok, es fecha, right? Entonces, when I want to say my birthday completely, right, including month and day, incluyendo día y mes, ok, o fecha y mes, ¿verdad? I'm going to say it like this. My birthday, oops, my birthday is on, ok, on, for example, February, February, um, February 4th, right, for example, ok, so, my birthday is on February 4th, pero ahí que estoy dando, estoy dando mes y estoy dando la fecha, ok, específica, but what happens if what I want to say is just a month? Si yo no quiero dar mucha información, ¿verdad? Eh, sino que solo quiero dar mi mes de cumpleaños. Entonces, en ese caso sería, my birthday is in February. Ok. So, si va a decir la fecha, on, vamos a incluir date. Si va a usar in, vamos a incluir only month. Ok. Date and bueno, aquí sería month and date. ¿Ok? No entiendo por qué lleva doble in. ¿Perdón? No entiendo por qué lleva doble in. Error de escritura, nada más, ahí es. ¿A dónde, a dónde, a dónde me equivoco? My birthday is in February. Ah, ah, sorry. Is, is, aquí es S. Sorry. Ese dice... Rosita. Sí, este. Ajá, uh -huh, es, I'm sorry, my mistake. My birthday is on February 4th, right? If, if si ocupo on, voy a usar mes y fecha. Y si voy a usar in, ¿verdad? Solo el mes. Ok, esas son las únicas dos posiciones que puedo utilizar. Okay. Oh, I understand. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Just give me one moment. I'm going to... Bueno, luego le voy a pasar, quizás voy a notar. Para pasarles eso después. Give me one second, because I do, hoy sí moví las cosas del escritorio. Eh, so, prepositions, right? Preposition, on, and in. Para pasarles después info, chicos. Ok, very good. So, that is about those two things. Ok, let me close it. And I'm going to erase all this. Clear all my drawings. And there we go. Ok. Bueno. Entonces, esa es la primera parte, right, de lo que estábamos hablando. But what happens um, with the numbers? Ok. Numbers are very important, right, when it comes to um, eh, dates, para, para las fechas. Cuando nosotros, chicos, decimos la fecha en español, usamos los números cardinales, ¿verdad? Ah, hoy es primero de mes, hoy es 15 de mes. Hoy es el 15 de febrero, no decimos hoy es el tercero de febrero, o no decimos es el quinto de febrero, pero en inglés sí. En inglés usamos los ordinal numbers, ¿ok? Entonces, en inglés we have cardinal, cardinal and ordinal, ordinal numbers, ¿ok? Así que esto lo voy a separar mejor. Cardinal numbers y tenemos ordinal numbers. Teacher, ¿y cuál es la diferencia entre los dos? Bueno, los cardinal numbers son los números que nosotros usamos regularmente. ¿Se ha fijado? ¿Verdad? Eh, como por ejemplo, 1, 2, 3, ¿verdad? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Entonces, but ordinal numbers are different. Por eso se llaman ordinales, ordinal number. Ordinal de orden, right? Entonces, I don't say primero, ¿verdad? Sí, o, ya, o no digo tercero de mes, o el tercero de febrero, o es el eh, onceavo de febrero, no. Aquí en español no lo hacemos así, digo es el once de febrero, es el quince de febrero, es el veinte de febrero, es el primero de marzo. Si en el primero, si se fijan, sí utilizo o primero de febrero, o primero de marzo, ¿verdad? En este caso. 
Entonces, los cardinal numbers son los que son esos, ¿verdad? Los números naturales que nosotros utilizamos y los ordinals son los que expresan un orden. Primero, segundo, tercero, cuarto, quinto, sexto, séptimo. Entonces, when we're talking about dates, cuando hablamos de fechas, we're going to use ordinal numbers. We're going to organize the days of the month, ¿ok? Entonces, uh -huh. ya se leen distinto, ¿verdad? Yo, ya no es one, sino que es first. Uh -huh. Ya no es two, sino que es second. Ya no es three, sino que es third. Ya no es four, sino que es fourth. fourth. Ya no es five, sino que es fifth. fifth. Ya no es six, sino que es six. six. Ya no es seven, sino que es seven. Ok, Seven. ya no es 8, sino que es 8. Ya no es 9, sino que es 9. Y ya no es 10, sino que es 10. Ok, so if you ten. see, they change a little bit, right? They change in pronunciation and they change in spelling. Ok, so I'm going to type it in the chat. Um, ordinal numbers, ordinal numbers, perdón que vea hacia acá, pero acuérdense que tengo dos pantallas, aquí tengo, los tengo ustedes y aquí ya tengo lo demás, ok, entonces ordinal numbers change in pronunciation, oops, pronunciation and spelling, ok, o sea, en pronunciación y en deletreo, son distintos a los naturales, verdad, entonces, eh, pay attention to that, okay? Because actually that will help you a lot. And in the video, okay, they were showing you um, a little bit on how to express, okay, special dates. Por eso Rosita me preguntaba, teacher, can I consider children say a special date? Of course you can. I mean, if, if it is a special uh, for you, you can go ahead and consider it as a special. So it says, when is your birthday? That's going to be the question that we're going to ask, right? When is your birthday, right? Entonces ya lo vamos a decir cada uno de nosotros, right? When is your birthday? So my birthday is on, if you want to say the date, you're going to say on April 5th. But if you want to say just the month, is in, my birthday is in April, and that's it, okay? I don't want to be more specific, right? And then you have a special date, right? This, it could be birthday, it could be independence date, it could be children's day, como no sé si Rosita. It could be nurse's day, it could be mother's day, it could be father's day, teacher's day, etc. And then you say the date. Okay? And also uh, you have um, the second example. It says, uh, there's a question, right? It says, when is independence day in the US? Independence Day is on July 4th, right? It's on July 4th. Special day plus verb on and then month and date, okay? So what about you guys? Let me go ahead and listen to two things. I want to listen to number one, your birthday, okay? Like the sentence, my birthday is, my birthday is on... Voy a usar yo la que saca April 5th, okay? And also, you can mention something else, right? I'm going to use the same. Independence Day is on September 15th, okay? In El Salvador, right? Independence, independence, independence. Oops, I make you okay. Independence. Day, okay, Independence Day is on September 15th. Okay, what about you guys? Raise your hand if you want to participate, please. Raise your hand if you want to participate. You're going to tell me your birthday. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Carlos Javier. Thank you. And then Roberto. Dígame, Carlos, two dates your birthday and an extra special date. Carlos, creo que no le ha quitado el, el mute a su teléfono, a su teléfono, perdón, a, a Zoom. Sorry. Don't worry, it's okay. 
My birthday is on June 2nd. Okay. Do you have another special day? Independent days is on September 15th. 15th. Okay. Thank you very much. What about you, Roberto Carlos? Hey, my birthday is on October 31st. And in the Salvador, Mother Day is on May, May 10th. Excellent. Thank you very much. That's correct. It's on May 10th. What about you, Karen? Karen? My birthday, sorry. My birthday is, is on September 18th. Okay. Do you have another special day uh, in mind right now? This month? No, no, especially, but because uh, no, no, no I date, don't. no special date. Okay, thank you very much. What about you, uh, Jose David? Jose David, can you hear me? Sorry, teacher. Yes. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. No, no. Problem. My my birthday is on October sixteenth. October 16th. Do you yeah. have another special day in mind? Please correct me. Is by example in El Salvador, mm -hmm. May 7th is soldier, soldier Day. Yeah, it's true. I think I think it is May 7th. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. So Soldier's Day uh, is on May 7th. Very good. May 7th. Okay. Thank you. What about Thank you? you you're welcome, Jose David. What about you, Irma? Uh, hello, uh, my Hi. birthday. My birthday is um February nineteenth. February nineteenth. Okay. Do you have another special date uh, in mind that comes to your mind right now? Um, no. No, okay, no problem, Irma. Thank you very much, Fernando. And then I will finish with Rosita. Fernando, what about you? Uh, good evening, teacher. Good evening. Nice to meet you. Nice to uh, meet you too. My birthday is on February 21st. February 21st, okay, thank yes. you. Do you have another date in mind, Fernando? Mm, yeah, for example, um, the Mother's Day. In El Salvador is on um, March. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you think? M March 10th. Okay. Uh, so what? When do we celebrate Mother's Day, guys? It's on. Oh May. May. Oh, March. March. May. Yes. May. <laughs> May 10th. Okay. May 10th. May 10th. Yeah. May 10th. Thank you very much, Fernando and Rosita. Mm -hmm. We'll finish with you. You're what welcome. About you? Mm -hmm. My birthday is on December 17. 17. Yeah. 17. Okay. Another special day that you have in mind? Uh, children's Day is on October 1st. On October? First. Yeah. Very good. Excellent, Rosita. That is correct. Thank you very much. I remember when we were at school, because actually I studied in public schools, right? Casi, bueno, sí, de toda mi educación fue, fue en escuela pública, pero sí, I remember um, October 1st, we used to get some snacks, right, for uh, children's day, I remember. Uh, eran como un presente, ¿verdad? It could be a cookie or it could be, I don't know, something to eat on that day. It was very nice. Thank you, Rosita. Now, guys, um, so as you could see, that's um, important information. And luego los compañeritos ahí les estuvieron compartiendo su birthday. Eh, Catherine says, my birthday is on November 12th. Carmen Lobo says, my birthday is on January 18th. Sylvia Michelle says, my birthday is on June 13th. Okay. Pero, chicos, estoy viendo ahí que no hay mayúsculas. Remember, months are with capital letters, okay? Uh, then Alexander says, my birthday is on August 22nd. 22nd, remember? Eh, esto es importante, chicos. Si ustedes se fijan, el spelling de first, second, and third es distinto, okay? De ahí el resto lleva TH. Pero los primeros tres, si ustedes se fijan, first es ST, Second is ND, ND, y luego third is RD, 
RD. So be careful, right? And then my birthday is on March uh, 13th and my birthday is on December uh, 13th. Okay, thank you, Paola, too. She's on uh, she, May, Ma, March 13th. Veo que algunos cumpleaños ya se van acercando, okay? Así que ya nos vamos a ir a ver si nos acordamos, si no nos recuerdan para decirles el happy birthday, right? Vaya, chicos. Entonces, ¿hay alguna pregunta con respecto a lo de las fechas y a los números? ¿Qué tipo de números dijimos que utilizábamos para las fechas? Ordinal numbers. Ordinal numbers. Ordinal numbers. And ordinal means order, right? So it goes in order. That's why they call them ordinal numbers. Okay, very good. So if there is no question, or if there are no questions, I will move on. There is a very interesting uh, topic after the conversation. We're going to practice the conversation and then we're going to move to the structure. Voy a llamar la estructura porque en realidad no es un tense, pero lo voy a llamar como una estructura y ya van a ver de lo que vamos a hablar, okay? So I have a conversation here, okay? I will read it first and then I will ask song, I will ask, I'm sorry, for some volunteers to read, okay? So I will write it first. And the name of the, of the uh, I would say, interaction or the conversation is Happy Birthday, okay? And it says we got Angie and we got Philip. So they two, the two of them are talking about something special. And Angie says, are you going to do anything exciting this weekend? Well, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Fabulous. When is your birthday exactly? It's August 9th, Sunday. So what are your plans? Well, my friend Kyla is going to take me out for dinner. Nice, is she going to order a cake? Yeah, and the waiters are probably going to sing happy birthday to me. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I think this is kind of something what we do here in a very spe specific restaurant where you can uh, buy pizza, right? So they they say yeah. for you, <laughs> and then you got blushed. Se pone todo rojito porque le están cantando a usted todo el mundo, ¿verdad? So you got blushed, and then uh, they sing, and then they clap very, you know, very loudly. Se escucha un gran gran ruido, right? And then you're in the middle of you know the restaurant and everybody is clapping because of it is your birthday right so this is something similar and take a look at what he says at the end but that it's so embarrassing he says well in my case i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind no me importaría it's, it's a very nice um i would say uh compliment but that's siento que bonito so i need two volunteers uh for the conversation no sé si las manitas que ya están levantadas son para eso me, me bueno. okay Aquí tengo, me voy a guiar por las manitas. ¿Quién dijo mí? Yo me vine. Mi. Me solo. Pero es Raúl. Que... No, no te la pusiste. Raúl. Raúl dijo. Uh, okay. Arnulfo. Arnulfo. Ok, Arnulfo. You're going to help me with Irma right now. So, Irma, you're going to help me with Angie. And Arnulfo, you're going to help me with Philip. Ok. No. Ok. <laughs> Hi. No, fue un error. Yo no voy a participar ahorita. Ah, oh, really? Okay, oh, why not? ¿Por qué no? Ya está. Let's let's do it. <laughs> ¿Sí? Oh no. <laughs> yet. No yet. Okay. Vamos a movernos entonces con. Pero entonces bajen las manitas los que no van a participar porque yo por las manitas me guío. Eh, entonces vamos a ir. Irma, ok, Irma. Irma, you're going to help me with Angie and Arnulfo is going to help me with Philip. No, sorry. Ah, es que me estoy yendo por las manitas, perdón. Si tiene la manita arriba, esa es la manita que yo voy a ver acá. Verónica, can you help me, please? Yo sí, te Yes. Vaya, go ahead. Angie. Sí, Angie. Y Arnulfo es Philip. Uh, are you going to do anything exciting this weekend? Well, I am going to celebrate my birthday. Fabulous. When is your birthday exactly? It's August 9th, Sunday. So what are you your plan? Uh, well, my friend Carla is going to take me out for dinner. Nice. Is she going to order a cake? Yeah, 
Where are probably going to sing happy birthday to me? It's so embarrassing. Okay, thank you very much. I was taking a look at the hands. Okay, thank you guys. Good job, excellent. Now let me continue with Rosa and Karen. Uh, Rosita, you are going to help me with uh, Angie. No, perdón, Rosita, Angie y Jennifer. Jennifer, you're going to help me with Philip. Y luego voy con Karen y con Jose. Okay. Uh, are you going to um, to to Angie, Angie? Anything. 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 this weekend? Well, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Uh, fabulous. 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 Fabulous to say. When is your very excited? It's August night, Sunday. So, what are your plans? Well, my friend Kayla is going to take me out for dinner. Now, is she going? to order a cake? Yeah, and the waiter are pro probably going to sing happy birthday to me. It's so embar em embarrassing. Embarrassing, thanks teacher. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Rosita and Jennifer. Y los últimos, luego los demás me acompañan con los siguientes uh, ejercicios, okay? So Karen mm -hmm. and Jose David. Karen, you're going to help me with Angie and Jose David, you're going to help me with Philip. Go ahead. Okay. Are you going to do anything ex exciting this weekend? Well, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Fabulous. When is your birthday exactly? It is August 9th, 9th, 9th. Sunday. 9th, Sunday. So, what are your plans? Well, my friend Kyla is going to take me out for dinner. Nice. Is she going to order our cake? Yeah, and the waiters are probably going to sing happy birthday to me. It's so em embarrassing. <laughs> thank wow. you very much, guys. Okay, everyone, thank you. Good job. Luego el resto pues me ayuda con, eh, con los siguientes porque van a ver más ejercicios tranquilos. Okay. Now, guys. The question is, I mean, we're talking about birthdays, as you can see, uh, they are, you know, talking about something special, a special day, which is a birthday, right? So what I wanted to tell me is the following, guys. What are they talking about exactly? I mean, yeah, it's a birthday, but what do they imply? ¿Qué es lo que ellos están como eh, preparando? What are they talking about? ¿Qué son esos? ¿Qué son esas cosas de las que están hablando? Of course, it's a birthday, okay? Estamos hablando de un cumpleaños. But um, what exactly are they describing? ¿Qué es lo que están describiendo ellos? ¿Es algo que pasó? ¿O que está pasando? What is ¿Qué va a pasar? Algo que pasará. ¿Qué va a pasar? Va a pasar a futuro? Okay, very good. Excellent. Just, si ustedes pudieran, exactly, the future, si ustedes pudieran resumir Todo lo que venga en esa conversación en una palabra, ¿en cuál la resumiría? Going to. Ok, tenemos una estructura. Tenemos. No. Ok. Actually, the word, la palabra con la que lo vamos a, vamos a englobar todo esto es la siguiente. They are talking about a plan. Ok, that's a plan. Eso es un plan, right? So actually, um, they are talking about that. She's asking, what are your plans? What are your plans? Oh, well, my friend Kyle is going to take me out for dinner. And nice, he's just going to order a cake. Yeah, and the waiters are probably going to sing happy birthday to me. It's so embarrassing, he says, right? So they're talking about plans, okay? Generally, guys, when we want to express um, plans or intentions, right? We're going to use that structure, right? So plans and intentions, okay? Cuando yo quiero expresar planes o intenciones. Teacher, pero ¿a qué se refiere cuando dice intention? 
porque probablemente no es un plan específico, pero por ejemplo, si yo digo, oh, uh, I'm going to watch TV in the evening, or I'm going to watch TV after the class, ¿verdad? Lo voy a digitar. I'm going to watch TV, oops, TV after the class. Es un plan, sí, pero es un plan que ya, yeah. ¿en cuánto? ¿Cuánto tiempo nos queda? In 20 minutes, right? Yeah, it's future, but that's your intention. Esa es su intención, but, but, pero yo no sé si le va a dar sueño, si se va a quedar dormido, si al final, pues mejor va a ir a cenar, right? Si va a ir a cenar, you're going to have dinner instead of watching TV, etc. Entonces, So that's your intention, right? That's what you want to do. Or you, you're, you're going to say, I'm going to study English. Aha, uh -huh. that's your intention. Eso es intención, pero I'm not pretty sure if you're going to do it, right? This is, so whenever we're talking about plans and intentions, as the conversation that you can see here, we're going to use going to, okay? Entonces, lo que decíamos sobre going to, chicos, es que going to no es un tense. O sea, no es un tiempo definido, sino que es una estructura. Y esa estructura me sirve a mí para poder expresar eh, planes o cosas a futuro, pero que son bien específicas. Eh, ¿Cómo así, teacher? Bueno, yo los diría a corto plazo, o cosas que ya están agendadas, o cosas que es un plan específico, ¿verdad? Entonces, yo puedo usar going to. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, examples, right, that we can get from the conversation. And I would say from the... From the um, Uh, a structure that comes from the video that you have in the platform, okay? Tenemos ahí uh, two things. It says, are you going to do anything this weekend? Are you going to do anything this weekend? So we have to answer, yes, I am. Yes, I am. So yo respondo yes, I am, porque la pregunta que me la están, me la están haciendo con verbo to be, are you? Yes, I am. Are you going to do anything this weekend? Yes, I am. I'm going to celebrate my birthday. Or the opposite. No, I'm not. No. I'm going to stay home. ¿verdad? Me quedo en la casa. I won't do anything. Okay. So let's go ahead and read number two. Tengo, is Kyla going to have a party for you? Fernando, would you like to read the two uh, answers? Fernando? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. She's going to invite all my friends. No, she isn't. She's going to take me out for dinner. Okay, thank you very much. Invite, remember, invite. Invite, you, sorry. Thank you. No, don't worry, it's okay. Thank you very much. Then the next question is, are the waiters going to sing to you? Are the waiters going to sing to you? And let me see... Um, Who wants to read? Okay, Rosita, read it, please. Um, yes, there are, they are, yes. they're going to see mm -hmm. happy birthday. Or no, they're, they're aren't. They, bow. they aren't. They aren't, mm -hmm. bow. They are going to give me a cake. They are going to give me a cake. Okay, thank you very much, Rosita. Now, the structure that you can see on the video, right, it includes the following um, elements, right? You need your subject, you need the verb be, right? You need going to, you need the verb, and you need the complement. Now, guys, when it comes to verb B, okay, with the verb B, uh, I just want to have a quick reminder, okay? Um, let me see. Vamos a hacer un, así rapidito un recordatorio, okay? We know that we have the subject pronouns are I, uh, you, he, she, it, we, you, okay. and they, okay? ¿Por qué dijimos que tenemos dos you? Singular and plural. Because yeah. it's singular exactly. And plural. exactly. Thank you very much. We got the singular form and then we got the plural form. So in uh, the affirmative way, I got I am, or if it is negative, right? I am not, right? 
Uh, if it is you, so that's going to be you are or you aren't. aren't. Very good. For he? Is. And isn't. 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 Very good. Isn't. For she? Is. is. Equals. Or isn't. Okay. For it? Is. Isn't. Is. 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 For we? We are. are, 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 are Very good. For you? You are. You are. You are. You are. Very good. If for they? Are, 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 are. Very good. Okay. So that's the way it, uh, we're going to use the verb be here. Okay. So if we're using the verb be in the affirmative form, all what I have to do is to match the verb with the subject that I'm using or that I'm making reference of. And then if it is negative, all what I'm going to do is just to convert my verb to the negative form according to the subject that I'm using. And that's it. Okay. So let me clear all my drawings. Okay. And let me close this. Very good. Okay, guys. Now, Going to, as you were saying before, well, some of you. Uh, okay, Rodrigo. Okay, no problem, Rodrigo. Go ahead. So going to, guys, it's, um, it, it, it's used to talk about the future. Right? It's used to talk about plans and intentions or things that I want to do, cosas que quiero hacer. Now, going to is not a tense. Eso ya lo dijimos, lo dejamos específico. Espe lo dejamos este, claro, pero no desde un principio, right? Going to is not a tense. No es un tiempo verbal, sino que it is a special expression to talk about the future. Okay, solo mente es eso, una expresión para hablar sobre el futuro. It is used with expressions such as tomorrow, tonight, next week, next month. Next year, um, in a few hours, in a few, hours. few days, uh -huh. by next week. By next week, it's Exactly, it's guys. Those are the structure, I mean, those are the expressions that we can use, right, to talk about the future, okay? And as you can see, they are very, very useful, right? Because if you want to express something, a plan, Right, plan for tomorrow or plan for tonight. Que ya para esta hora, que plan va a haber, verdad? Si es tarde. Okay, but if you want to express your plans, you need to be very specific, right? You need to specify the time expression. Okay. ¿Alguna pregunta hasta el momento, chicos? Yes, teacher, I have a question. Dígame. Um, ¿Por qué, o sea, usamos el, para responder, digamos, como I am, o, o sea, el verbo to be, se puede decir? Sí. Eh, me confunde en el sentido de que eso lo ocupamos como el simple present y ahora será lo mismo con el going to. O sea, es lo mismo. Ok. Es lo mismo. Cuando respondemos, dice usted. Como no estamos hablando, o sea, en español se le diría como, vaya, o sea, como vas a ir a ver tele más tarde, por, de, por decirlo así, va. Entonces en español vamos a responder, se responde yes, I am. Entonces en español se escucha sí, estoy, no. Eh, no. No, actually no. Um, the thing is that in Spanish, in Español, pues la, la respuesta es completamente distinta. En inglés lo hacemos, tenemos dos formas de contestar. Remember, we got the short form y tenemos the, the, the long form or the full form. Mm -hmm. Entonces, en vez de decir, yes, I am, yo puedo decir, yes, I am going to watch TV in the evening. Okay. Cuando yo digo yes I am, no estoy expresando eso que nosotros entendemos en español como si sí, yo estoy o yo soy, ¿verdad? Si que al decir yes I am, automáticamente estoy diciendo sí lo haré o sí eso es lo que voy a hacer, ¿verdad? O lo digo de forma completa, yes I am going to watch TV in the evening or yes I am. Al decir yes I am, automáticamente estoy diciendo lo mismo, sí voy a ir a ver televisión más en la, en la noche, ¿ok? Entonces... No, de, la, la forma en la que debemos entenderlo es que nosotros estamos expresando de forma, perdón, estamos contestando de forma afirmativa. Sí a lo que acabas de decir tú, ¿verdad? O si yo digo no, I am not, no a lo que tú acabas de decir, ¿verdad? No, I'm not going to watch TV in the evening because I have to study English. Ok. 
supuestamente, ¿verdad? Ok, entonces, pero sí, cuando yo respondo yes I am or no I'm not, es solamente una forma corta de decir sí a lo que tú acabas de decir o no a lo que tú acabas de decir. O solo contesta de una forma completa. No sé si contesto su pregunta. Yes, of course. Ok, thank you very much. Sí. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Dígame. Sí. Eh, I have a question. Eh, what is the difference between eh, going to and will? Mm, pues se lo voy a contestar a usted, pero la verdad es que no, no lo quiero confundir a los demás, pero yeah. the difference is that going to is uh, express certainty, right? <clears throat> Sorry, certainty, right? Expresa certeza y will no. Will es uh, solo una predicción de lo que yo no estoy segura. Is Um, it expresses uncertainty, right? Expresa no certeza. No estoy, cer uh, no estoy segura de, de lo que voy a hacer. Por ejemplo, For si... For example, I will be professor, teacher. I will be a professor. Significa mm -hmm. que usted va a hacer todo lo que está en su poder para poder mm -hmm. hacerlo, pero no está seguro al final usted si lo va a hacer o uh -huh. no. Yes. Pero si yo digo, por ejemplo... I'm going, to, I'm going to be a teacher. Si alguien me dice a mí, I'm going to be a teacher, es porque esa persona ya se inscribió, ¿verdad? En la carrera, eh, ya comenzó a estudiar, ya se comenzó a preparar y está completamente segura de lo que va a hacer. Pero si alguien me dice, I will be a teacher, es como que un niño me lo dijese. Teacher, I, I will be a doctor when I grow up. ¿Verdad? Cuando crezca, yo seré doctor. But you're not sure, porque solo es un niño. ¿Quién sabe si se dé? ¿Quién sabe que no se dé? Entonces, eh, cuando uso going to, es, estoy expresando un nivel de probabilidad bastante alto. Y cuando uso will, el nivel de probabilidad es bastante bajo. Ok, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Contesté la pregunta. Yes. Ok, okay very good. Very good. Sure, I have a question too. Dígame. Entonces, en estos casos, cuando nosotros utilizamos el going, el verbo be, en español sería como seré o será. O haré. O hará cuando utilizamos eh, el, el going en estos casos de I am going to many topics, uh -huh. verdad? Sí, fíjense de que no. Eh, bueno, le, le voy a comentar algo así bien importante. En mi caso, eh, yo tenía una situación cuando yo aprendí inglés. Yo aprendí inglés ya adulta, ya les he dicho, verdad? Yo tenía ya mis 18 años cuando yo pues, decidí que iba a estudiar eso, pero hay una cosa que sí yo no hice pero no la hice no porque no porque no quisiera sino que no lo, no lo hice porque lo hice inconscientemente lo voy a decir verdad yo aprendí quizás más que todo leyendo entonces yo me acostumbré a no traducir entonces yo como no traducía las cosas empezaban a tener sentido sin querer entonces cuando nosotros vemos el going to yo no puedo traducir el, el, el verbo to be ahí porque si yo digo I'm going to watch TV es el equivalente en español de yo voy a, yo voy a ver televisión en la tarde. I'm going to visit my grandparents on the weekend. Yo voy a visitar a mis abuelos el fin de semana. Entonces, esa a veces es como, digamos, el, el inconveniente o el, el downside, ¿verdad? La cosa negativa de traducir, porque luego hay cosas, estructuras que no tienen sentido. Entonces, en estos casos, cuando yo no puedo traducirlo, busco el equivalente en español. Entonces, el equivalente en español del going to es, yo voy a, voy a ver la televisión en la noche, después de la clase. Yo voy a ir a trabajar mañana, ¿verdad? Yo voy a ir al doctor mañana en la tarde. So, I'm going to watch TV in the evening after the class. I'm going to go to work tomorrow and I'm going to visit the doctor in the afternoon. Entonces, no sé si contesto su pregunta. Yes, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other question, guys? Ah, yes. Tenía, tenía otra. Ajá, <laughs> what, is the, what is the meaning of go ahead? Dele. Go ahead. Dele. Uh, <laughs> Vaya. Ande. Dele. Uh -huh. That's go okay. ahead. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. No more questions? Perdón, chicos. Que hace calor. Que terrible. Ya está la... You're right. It is very hot. Huh? Can you write? Uh, what? I'm sorry. You were. Which one? Word. La que dijo. No, la que Ah, dijo. la frase. Go ahead. Uh -huh. 
Ajá, go ahead. Ahí está. Go ahead en el chat. Ok. Any other question? Pregunta, chicos. No. Acuérdense que yo estoy aquí para contestar su pregunta, ¿verdad? Y, y si de repente pues no hay preguntas, entonces yo continúo con el material. Pero si no hay preguntas, entonces voy a aprovechar esos últimos minutitos, cinco minutos que me quedan. Y pues eh, vamos a ver qué más traía. Bueno, more examples, ¿ok? Uh, probably, probably what, I, what I would like to make a reference of is the verb be, right? Uh, just to make sure that I'm using the uh, right verb be, right? Because I got, I got, I have here the structure, right? So you see, tengo la estructura, pero la tengo pues eh, de la forma que corresponde en este caso, ¿verdad? Eh, como eh, subject, el verbo to be, que generalmente cuando dice verbo to be es porque lo tengo que conjugar, ¿verdad? Entonces tengo ya sea am, is, or are, si es afirmativa. Luego tengo going to. Y algo bien importante, chicos, el verbo que voy a utilizar. El verbo que voy a utilizar es el infinito. Infinity, perdón. Es en forma base. Ok, infinito, Dios mío. Estoy traduciendo la forma. Y lo peor es que incorrecta. Ok, es el infinity. Y es en base form. Cuando este, yo estoy usando going to, el verbo to be acá, chicos, me funciona a mí como un auxiliar. O sea, verb be helps me to um, make structures with going to, ok, entonces verb be acá viene a ayudar, el en sí no tiene significado ahí, el, el que tiene el, el significado principal es el verbo principal, que es ese verbo que está ahí al final, que es in infinitive or in base form, forma base, ok, entonces in the examples I have, I'm going to sing at the party, I'm going to sing at the party, entonces, el verbo principal es sing. Um, or I am going to sing at the party. Okay? If it is singular, she is going to sing at the party. He is going to sing at the party. It is going to, it is going to rain. Okay? She is plural. Well, you're going to sing at the party, guys. Or we're going to sing at the party. Or they are going to sing at the party. Entonces, si ustedes se fijan, es nada más tener ese cuidado, ¿verdad? Que les mencionaba hace un rato. El verbo to be acá funciona como un auxiliar. It is just helping. Solo viene, nos echa la manita para que la, que está, lo, la estructura que estamos haciendo tenga sentido. Pero en realidad el, el, el principal lo lleva ese verbo, ese infinity. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué dice aquí que es infinity? Bueno, porque tengo el going to. El to es una partícula bien importante y después del to siempre viene un infinitivo o una forma base. ¿Ok? No sé si hay alguna pregunta, chicos. No, teacher. No. Ok. Eh, bueno, uh, what happens if it is negative? Si es negativa, pues yo puedo decidir si voy a utilizarlo de esta forma, ¿verdad? Tengo mi subject, tengo mi verb be, que es am, is, or are, plus not. O simple y sencillamente lo utilizamos como hace un momento yo les mostraba. Am not, isn't, or aren't. Or you can use the full form. I'm not, is not, or are not going to plus the verb in, if, in the infinitive or the base form. Okay, examples. I am not going to sink at the party. She's not going to sink at the party. You are not going to sink at the party. Okay, so you decide if you want to do it in full form or if you want to do it in the contraction form. Okay. I can say I'm not going to sink at the party or she isn't going to sink at the party or they aren't going to sink at the party, okay? So guys, pretty much this was like an introduction, right, to um, the topic that you have at the beginning of section number one. Um, try to work um, that section tomorrow. I will share, ustedes ya saben, les comparto yo pues mañana, exercises, Uh, I will share with you uh, probably um, a summary, right, of what we have studied today. Lo que sí quisiera es que mientras nosotros pues lo vamos trabajando acá, ustedes empiecen también a trabajarlo en casa, ¿verdad? Eh, recuerden pues que la, el, el completar la plataforma es importantísimo, ¿verdad? Para que usted pueda ser promovido al siguiente nivel. 
Así de que empiezan a trabajar, ¿verdad? Eh, la, la plataforma y cuando encuentren un, un, algo que ustedes sientan que les, está, les, hace, les hace difícil, acuérdense, tienen que traerme a la clase esas preguntas. Usted, eh, si quiere ahí la apunta, ¿verdad? Nosotros así hicimos en el modo anterior, lo apunta ahí en su libretita, ¿verdad? Y ya cuando venimos acá a la clase, entonces aquí lo, lo, lo contestamos en vivo y en directo, ¿verdad? Dígame, Dígame Gaby. Ok, eh, I am not going to see the body es una forma formal, ¿verdad? De expresarlo. Y cuando decimos I am no, eh, como abreviarlo, es como informal. O uh -huh. ahí sí que no sé. No, no, lo, lo que sí les comentaba, no sé si recuerdan que yo les había comentado en el módulo anterior, es que las contracciones generalmente las utilizamos cuando hablamos, pero cuando escribimos, lo, más, lo correcto es quizás hacerlo de, de esta forma, como lo ven en pantalla. Y las contracciones pues las dejamos para cuando hablamos, ¿verdad? Pero no, no es que una sea formal o otra informal. Sin embargo, si usted está escribiendo un papel importante como un ensayo o como una carta muy formal, ahí sí definitivamente nos recomendaría usar contractions, ¿verdad? Porque sí, las contractions es cuando hablamos. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome, ¿ok? Chicos, ¿hay alguna pregunta antes de que cerremos la sesión? No, teacher. No, All is clear. Okay, everything's clear. Very good. So, guys, thank you very much for joining. I'm very happy to have you again, right? Eh, lo bueno es que van a estar un poquitito más temprano. Así que thank you very much for joining, and I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Same time. And good evening, the same teacher. Day. See you good tomorrow. Evening. Good evening. See you, teacher. Bye-bye, bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.